Well, Bishop Murphy, you've uh, just come back from London, and I think have some have wonderful things that you've had to report from that trip, and uh, some some wonderful things that uh, about the creation of this missionary society. A few questions I think people might have, and and uh, so I appreciate you taking the time to to answer those. Um, first of all, you've said for years that we're a mission, nothing more, nothing less. What does the creation of this mission society, how does that affect that statement? Or It actually just gives shape to what I've said for years. It gives shape and order to what we've said we think we are. What we believe that we are is a mission. We didn't choose to be jurisdictional and create a series of dioceses or a province. We helped with the creation of the Anglican Church in North America, serving for four years on the executive committee and working with the Constitution Canons because that's a legitimate, valid way to order church life. But we chose to be a lot more lean and specific in what we do. As, as Bishop John Rogers put it the other day on the telephone, he said, we're stripped down for mission. And what he meant by that was we don't think we fit in Saul's armor that well. We'd rather go and tackle this evangelism through church planting in a much more lean and specific way. So we use bishops and leaders to plant churches, and that's our focus. So we're a mission, nothing more, like a jurisdiction or a new province, but nothing less. We are a mission. Well, in the past, we were overseen by, uh, by a primate, by an archbishop, or in, in our early days, by two archbishops. This new model calls for what I think is a term of college of consultors. Could you talk to us a little bit about what the role of that college of consultors is and, and who the, that's going to be initially? We've always believed that it was important to have oversight. And the oversight, as you say, was in the initial phases by two archbishops, Archbishop Young and Archbishop Kalini. And in the season, after a time with Archbishop Young's retirement, it was just Archbishop Kalini. And then with his retirement and the transition out of Rwanda, we still want the oversight. So a college of consultors will be the guardians and overseers of this mission society, the Anglican Commission in America. And they will be made up of what canonists would call competent ecclesiastical authorities, but what they are is archbishops and key leaders. We have the archbishop as I mentioned earlier, from uh, Congo to Cherit, Henry Isangoma, and we have the Archbishop of Kenya to serve with our founding archbishops, and that body will guard and oversee the Anglican Mission in America in its new life and shape as a mission society. Great. You've also stated uh, throughout this period that the goal or the desire would be to see multiple jurisdictions uh, and this society be formed with multiple jurisdictions uh, related to it. Um, right now, obviously, we have the Congo uh, is, is come on board and canonically we've had bishops move to the, and clergy move to the Congo. Um, do you anticipate other jurisdictions in the future? I do. Um, we were birthed with multiple jurisdictions, Southeast Asia and Rwanda, and I would like to continue that to have a firm and real and relatively broad global connection with uh, the larger Anglican Communion. And because the Archbishop of Kenya has joined the Archbishop of Congo in serving on our College of Consultors, we now have those two connections. Mm -hmm. And I would envision that we will have additional connections where other leaders, other dioceses and provinces would say, I really believe in the vision of evangelism through church planting in North America. I really do want to support this work and this concept, and I would be happy to join and be a part of that. And therefore, with the multiple jurisdictional piece would be expanding as God gave it favor and God gave it direction. Well, we understand that bishops have uh, needed to have uh, connections with a jurisdiction, canonical, have their orders canonically resident in jurisdictions, and clergy will as well at some point need to be uh, clearly canonically resident. What about churches? Do, do the churches need to change their residency in this process? From our beginning, uh, under Archbishop Kalini and Young, we have had the ordained ministers canonically connected to a province. The congregations have all only been in the work of those provinces in North America called the Anglican Commission. 
So the Anglican Commission is like a, a basket that holds all the congregations. And in order to be in the Anglican Commission as a congregation, its leadership and board or vestry has to choose to do it, then has to go through the affiliation process to do it. And once it's done, they're in the Anglican Commission in America. The clergy, canonically ordained types, have to be connected to a larger body, a province, and th therefore they have to go through steps that congregations don't have to go through. So congregations do not have to do a thing. They went through the effort, took the steps to affiliate with the Anglican Commission, and in this new Anglican Commission society, no new thing has to happen. They are in the Anglican Commission, or Mission Society, unless they chose to say, I would like to disaffiliate and connect with some other entity. So the, the corporate structure that we've had with the Anglican Commission, that in essence doesn't change at all in this formation of this, this society? Not at all. There's no change for congregations. They've already gone through the work to become affiliated with the Anglican Commission. And there's no change in our board, the 501c3 board, the Anglican Commission board, because this is not a, a decision or an action that would affect anything in the life of the board and its responsibility to oversee both the finances and oversee any legal matters that may need to be undertaken or considered. And you've also stated throughout this that this would be a process and there would be an opportunity for, for clergy and others to sort of um, have some shaping influence uh, looking at before this is all finalized. How do you anticipate that taking place? We began the process last May and we began to talk together as a council of bishops and then we began to talk to the network leaders and then last fall, we talked at Polly's Island with a number of clergy and explored it at that point. We've continued the conversation with bishops, network leaders, and other key leaders. But what I would like to do in this next 40 days, between the time that the mission has now been established, the mission society has been established, and the ratification of a constitution statutes, I would like to involve the bishops yet again in shaping the Constitution statutes, the network leaders yet again in shaping the Constitution statutes, and then clergy and lay people meeting together at some designated point on June 3rd or 4th to look at the proposed Constitution statutes and see what needs to be improved or tweaked or amended and then ultimately ratified, which would involve the clergy on two different occasions, once last fall and then once this next June, and laity also to have a voice and be a part of it. Because as promised last year when we were talking about this with bishops and network leaders and clergy, we don't want to pour the concrete until everyone's had an opportunity to look at it and ratify it, approve it. And then it, then it will be complete. And that will happen within this next 40 days, God willing. Well, I think on behalf of the mission, uh, we appreciate the work that you've done. We know it's taken a lot of travel around the globe, literally, and uh, many, many meetings on many, many levels uh, to see this happen. And, and so I think our appreciation for your hard work, our appreciation to our founding archbishops, their continuing support and, uh, and tireless work to bring us to this point. Um, and we rejoice in what God is doing, and we look forward to the future that he has for us in planting churches in, uh, throughout North America. Thank you. You're certainly welcome.